Welcome to Flashpoint. I'm Gene Bailey. Glad you're here. All right. We've got a special program tonight. And before we start the program with our interviews and our special guests, I'm going to read a prophetic word given by Pastor Terry Pearsons of Eagle Mountain Church back in June of 2002. And I want you to listen to this because there's some real truths in here. Uh, but listen to it in its entirety. Great trials are coming upon the sons of men. And those who only know how to walk as mere men will be overtaken, overcome, and burdened by the trials, the trials, the trials. But those who are acquainted with the spirit of grace, those who are acquainted with my ways, those who are acquainted even in their souls with the things and the movings of the spirit, those who know me by the sound of my voice, that they have heard through my word, those whose ears are inclined to the leading of my spirit, shall walk victorious and walk above the trials, the trials, the trials. Those who are accustomed to hearing me in prayer, those who are accustomed to speaking with me often will know my voice, will understand my ways, and will walk high above the elements of this world. The elements of this world are low. The elements of this world are weak by comparison to the Spirit of God that is grace to work through and upon men. But do not be fooled. Do not be deceived into thinking that because the elements of this world are low in comparison to the things of the Spirit, that they are weak and low where you are concerned. They will overtake you. They will overpower you. They will swallow you. They will hurt you. They will burden you. They will weigh you down for they are designed by their influencer, Satan, to destroy you. And they will destroy you unless you are doing as my word says, unless you are following the leadings of my Holy Spirit, unless you do the weight and the burden and the pressure, the crushing burdens of this world will come on you and they will overtake you. But heed now the voice of my spirit. Heed now the voice of my spirit. Listen carefully to the voice of my spirit. Turn your back on the elements of the world. Turn your back on the voice of your own flesh and begin even now, if you have not begun already, to lay aside things that promote the voice of the world. Choose me, for I am your life. Choose me, for I am your way. Choose me, for I am the truth. Choose me and I will lead you into a place of victory that will thrill your heart, thrill your soul, and will thrill every fiber of your existence. And you will be the manifestation of my glory in the earth. I do not choose to glorify myself just in circumstances. I do not choose to glorify myself just in natural things such as deliverance through storms. Now my desire is for all my people to be glorified in these days. My desires for all of my children to be lifted and raised and glorified way, way above, even to the highest heights of the spiritual kingdom. That's my desire. But your desire must match my desire. You will not be blessed. You will not be changed. You will not be encouraged. You will not be delivered by my name. You will not be if you do not choose me, if you do not follow me. If you do not listen to me, if you do not lay down the voice, you do not lay down the ways and lay down the wickedness of this generation. For I'm a jealous God and I will not share my glory and I will not place my glory upon those who choose to follow after those ways. I will not place my deliverance upon those who choose and seek after the designs and the desires of the flesh. I will not. I will not. I will not. Be warned. I will not. Now, I am a God of mercy. I am a God of deliverance. And it is my desire, it is my plan, and it is my way to be the source of great deliverance to you. But I am not looking to just deliver you. I am looking to exalt and promote my name in you. And that is not just deliverance from trouble. I'm not looking to just scantily pull you out by the skin of your teeth. My desire is glory. My desire is victory. My desire is that those things change because of you. My desire is that you dominate the things of this world. My desire is that you dominate and that you control circumstances where they affect your life so that others may see. 
It is no glory to me that when I have to deliver you out of a circumstance because you're in the midst of some fleshly oriented, sexually oriented, when you're involved in what I see in my eyes, the dirt and the filth of this world. That's no glory to me. I rescue you because I love you and because you call out to me, but it is no glory. Not the glory that I seek, not the glory I desire, and I want my glory to be seen in you. So walk as children of the glory. Walk even now as though you already reigned with me. Walk even now as though you are already victorious. Walk even now, letting go on the left and letting go on the right and shaking loose the things that separate you from me. Shake loose the things in the filth of the world. Shake loose from those things. Shake them loose. Let them go. With all your heart determined to be holy. With all your heart determined to be consecrated and prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for the days of glory. For if you're not prepared for them, they shall, they shall come upon you and they shall surprise you. And though you may reap some small reward and be glad for it, you shall fall short of my great glory that I've planned for my church. Give heed and listen to the voice of what I say. Amen. All right. I agree with that. Let's walk and operate in the glory. Listen, tonight we are going to bring you hope. We are going to ignite your faith and we are going, you're going to leave after this hour and go, man, I am so glad I tuned in to Flashpoint because of all those people said, all those words, we're going to send that to your house right now, wherever you're watching. So before we get into the into any further into the interviews, I want to give you our website. It's very simple. GoVictory.com slash Flashpoint. You can see any of the programs there. <coughs> In fact, if you go to MyVictory.com, GoVictory.com, you can see any of the programming right here that's available on the Victory Channel. And listen, we're excited to be able to bring Flashpoint to you. And starting Monday, daily, twice a day, news in the spirit of faith, and you're going to be blessed by it. I know you guys have been asking for it. Well, it's here, and we're rolling it out Monday at 12 Eastern and 5 Eastern, twice a day, Monday through Friday. All right, well, let's get into tonight's panel. Uh, joining with me from Reno, Nevada, Mario Murillo, John Graves from across town, and our very special guest, Pastor Bill and Benny Johnson. Welcome, guys. Glad you're here tonight. All right. Good to be with you. I want to I want to start uh, by talking about the obvious. Okay, so you're saying, Gene, what's the obvious? All right, here it goes. Don't don't get mad at me. All right. It seems to me that in the body of Christ we have two different camps going right now, and I hate to say camps. We've got the people that are going. Trump is going to be president here in the next, you know, you just wait. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And over here, we've got the other group that's going, it didn't happen. You guys need to apologize. You were wrong. Apologize. We need an apology. You were wrong. You were wrong. You were wrong. And while this stuff is going on, now I will say right here, right now, go on record. I don't believe this is over yet, ladies and gentlemen. I still stand and believe that we're going to see God make some things manifest that are going to shock, surprise and you're going to be happy about. Even so, so you're on one of these sides. This is where the enemy likes to live. He likes to get us, the church, so consumed into this, well, were they right or were they wrong? And with this, and did you hear him? He backed down. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. They issued an apology. So listen, that is the distraction of the enemy. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. Uh, but before we get into too much of that, I want to tap into uh, <clears throat> John Graves right across town. You brought up, you, we uh, text quite often, and, and you brought up an option to this whole story that I thought was very interesting. Now, we've been talking about uh, in Scripture about Solomon and Adonijah and, and who is going to yeah. be king and that issue. But there was another story that you brought up last night, and I want to get that, tell that so that we can get things kicked off and get started. Okay, so to me, what happens is we get into binary thinking. We get into limited thinking. It's all or nothing. And it's either the people who said Trump was going to be president or right or wrong or the people who said he won't. Let's get there's a third option. 
The third option is sometimes God does things we don't quite understand. David was anointed king, but there was another man who had the title of king. And there was a long period of things that didn't make sense if you have binary thinking or linear thinking where you just want God said this, therefore it's going to happen and don't deviate. It's a maturity if somebody's wrong to apologize, but let's leave grace for people and let's leave some time. There were a lot of people, including some of the people who are adamant now, who prophesied Trump would be. And I was one of the people saying, are you sure? Surely not. Not that guy back in 2016. Now I say, huh, I was wrong about that. What else might I be wrong about? So t let's take this with a humble posture and let's give some grace to people and say, you know what? If they've said something's going to happen, the Bible's really clear about that. We can just walk through the process and do it. But sometimes it's like David. You could be anointed king or anointed with some type of authority, and there's a long season of refinement that happens. And it could be that God's humbling that particular person. King Hezekiah gave him a choice. Maybe that's what's going on with President Trump. We don't know. Maybe it's he's going to have to be two terms. Maybe they're just not consecutive terms. We don't know. Let's give it time, but let's stay focused on loving the body of Christ, accepting those we disagree with, and looking for God. Where are you at work? Where are you doing something? That's what we're constantly looking for. Where are you at work, God? That's what's in my heart for the body of Christ to begin to think about this in a different new way. Yeah, amen. Amen. Good word there, John. All right, uh, Mario, let's get you before we get to the Johnsons there. I want to hear what you've got to say. By the way, I'm awesomely privileged to be with the Johnsons. They're family to me, and I'm very glad that they're here. Why is the devil dividing us right now, Gene? Why would he do this at this moment? Put us on the defensive instead of on the offensive. To forget the agenda that is being unfolded now is the most evil that we've seen in American history. They want to make get rid of freedom of worship, they want to make the army and the military an arm of the democratic propaganda machine. They want to define Trump as an enemy of the state. This is the time for the body of Christ to come together and to realize what we have in common. What is our common hope? What is our common threat? We will have time in the future to be prophetically accurate about everything that happened the last several months. What we don't have time to do is to turn on each other while the enemy is mounting the greatest assault on the America that we've ever seen. We've come to this moment in the name of Jesus and by the power of God. God wants to give us miracles, unity, power, souls, and clout politically to stop this evil. That's what I feel Satan's doing. He's threatened by the church's ability to unify and to be revived. Yes. So there it is. And that's what I feel is the message of this hour. Amen. All right. And listen, just so you know, those of you guys watching, I, these guys can disagree with me anytime. OK, so if they want you, I give I just want to make sure you guys know this isn't uh, uh, we aren't all of one necessarily one thought, one mind. They can disagree with any time. OK, so that don't get hung up on agree or disagree. All right. All right. So let me turn this over to uh, Pastor Bill and Benny Johnson. By the way, Benny, thank you for being such a follower on social media of uh, Flashpoint. You're one of our top fans and we're so happy yeah. to have you there. Uh, so thank you. But I, but I want to get you guys to weigh in on the, our discussion. Well, I agree with John and Mario. I think it's like one distraction, 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 distraction. And as an intercessor, I, you know, I wake up in the morning and, and sometimes I'm just swirling and I can choose to be distracted with my day in that swirl, or I can say, God, what are you doing today? Yeah. And I think that's what we need to be doing is saying, God, what are you doing right now? And I'm sitting here going, are we still going over who did it, who didn't do it, and who said what, and who needs to apologize. I'm like, are we still there? It's like, to me, that's just so immature, and that we need to stop it right now and just stop being distracted, like Mario said, and stay focused on what God is doing, because he has surprised us all. Just have to say, he has surprised us all. Yes, that's the truth. Yeah, you know, the, the enemy really wants to turn us away from hope because uh, our measure of influence is always according to the level of hope we carry. And what's happening is people are becoming so discouraged 
that they, to be honest, uh, are looking, they want Jesus to come back right now, which I'm fine with. But the problem is, is the church has greater faith in the return of Christ than we do in the power of the gospel. We've been given the power of the gospel to bring transformation to our cities and our nations. And it's upon us right now to stand in that power of the gospel and to demonstrate what has been functioning well, you know, for 2000 years. It just need, we just need to stand up once again and declare the real power of the gospel now. Yeah, amen. Speaking of the power of the gospel, Mario, I want to play this quick, this quick clip of what happened there in Bakersfield uh, a couple of weeks ago. I want you, this is this is probably the most exciting thing that I see uh, in in the midst of all this, with you being on this program talking about what God did in those tent meetings. All right, we're going to take a minute mm -hmm. out and watch this quick clip about what God did in a tent in Bakersfield. Watch. Praise God, Mario. I love seeing souls saved and people get healed. Give us, go ahead, give us another update of what God did in those meetings. Well, that lady that you saw bouncing up and down was in such excruciating pain when she came into the meeting, she practically had to be carried in. And all of a sudden she starts jumping up and down and every ounce of pain left her. The other note that I'd like to make to people is that all ages, all races, all backgrounds were under that tent. You could have a bank president with a homeless person seated right next to each other. And those people came from everywhere to simply be under that tent in that atmosphere and hear the direct preaching of the gospel. It reminds me of the Jesus movement. Mm. When the left was going crazy across America, immorality was rampant, drug addiction was rampant, and yet the Holy Spirit fell in California. We're feeling it again, that same shaking of the ground. People are so hungry and so ready. And again, we can't be distracted. I'm not going to stop until we see thousands saved in California. Yeah, Amy. All right, Mario, tell them where you're going next. We are going to Modesto Manteca area. And uh, the date that we're going to meet in a summit with 200 leaders from everywhere in California is a perfect date. It's March the 4th. So we're going to march forth on March the 4th with leaders from all over California meeting at Christian Worship Center with Bishop Steve Perea. We're going to have lunch there and announce the details on March the 4th of the next 10th crusade will be Modesto. After that, Sacramento. Yeah. And Sacramento will be the largest we've ever had. Amen. All right. I want to put his, uh, leave his website up there, mariomarillo.org. You want to get involved with this? Listen, this is it. Luke 19, 10, the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And there is no better way mm -hmm. than to get involved with that. And you know, Mario, I don't know if you know it, uh, Kenneth Copeland, really a couple of years ago, uh, yes. heart was breaking for California. And uh, we started coming back to stake a claim in Sacramento for God to return in an even bigger way in that government and in all, all, the, all the cities up and down the West Coast that we're going to see a major move of God. And I believe what we're seeing with you and, of course, Sean Foyt and what's going on at Bethel, we're seeing all of God's doing it. I mean, we're, we've stepped he over into is. that, which you bring up a great point. Like the Jesus <clears throat> movement, uh, those of you that are too young to remember, uh, it, it, I mean, there was the, the nation was in an upheaval 
of upheavals. Uh, we had Vietnam going on. We had all sorts of social issues happening. Racism is still, sound familiar? And all of this was going on and God shows up. Makes me think of Azusa Street. Uh, it makes me think of the Great Prayer Revival of 1857 that went to England in 1859 and on to Africa. It makes me think of uh, the Welsh Revival. Every time, and I'm going to, I, Pastor Bill's a fan of revival, so I'm going to lob this softball over to him and let him answer that. But isn't there every time that we see God move in a big way, there is also something happening on the other side in the world? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's this statement in scripture where he says uh, he was about to do something, but he said the sin of the Amorite is not yet complete. And the Lord uh, shows up op opposite to his surroundings. Uh, in the wilderness, he showed up as a fire in the dark of night. He showed up as a cloud in the heat of the day. He shows up opposite to surroundings. And so how does he show up in a recession? How does he show up when there's racism uh, that's rampant? Um, he is prepared to show up and it will be opposite of everything that's going on because the gospel does have the answer. Yes. Amen. Tell us, uh, Pastor Bill, what's going on at Bethel in your church? I think people need to hear what's happening there. Oh, goodness. Uh, it's... <laughs> or Benny, or Benny. <laughs> Well, if you can get there's it just, out. <laughs> there's just a, a, a tenderness, you know. There's just, uh, we've had seasons where the glory of the Lord would show up in, uh, in, in prolonged ways for months, months at a time. <laughs> it's, it's starting to happen again. Yeah, it's starting to happen again. There's, there's just such, with children, with every age group, just uh, we're actually in a tent outside uh, in the freezing cold, but there's just, people are just packed in there because they want to they meet with God. And there's such a presence coming that just permeates everything that we're doing. It's just, it's, it's overwhelming in the most wonderful way. Well, you know, we, we um, you know, the church shut down and stuff. And so we thought, well, let's put a tent up. And our students have started meeting every night for prayer and worship. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, well, let's include the church and let's meet at four o'clock Sunday nights and let's do just worship and prayer. And the first night for me personally, I just couldn't stop smiling. I just thought, oh, this is a new, fresh yes. wind of God that's happening again, if that makes yes. sense. Yes. And then last Sunday night, I, I spent the whole time crying. It was just the sweetest presence of God. Mm -hmm. And for people just to get together and worship and prayer. And one of the things is we haven't seen each other for quite a long time. So it was just this blessed reunion. And God just fell fresh on us. And yeah, and it's it wise. feels like... Um, you know, during the revival, um, I don't know, the 90s or whatever it was, the renewal, whatever you want to call it, it just, it feels like that yeah. again, but different. And it's fresh and it's, we're being reset. Yeah. And it's, it, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mario, I, I mean, you've been doing these meetings, you, you know, for a long time and we've had a little time to get to know each other and, and hear all that God's done through you. I, I mean, are you sensing the same thing that Pastor Bill and Benny are talking about the, there at Bethel? You know, in the Jesus movement, we had one earmark that told us that the Spirit of God was about to reform the culture. <clears throat> and that sign was when people asked to be saved without anyone approaching them. We had outreach centers where people would knock on the door all hours of the night saying, I need Jesus. I need to get saved. Twice in the tent, <clears throat> I had to stop because the moaning that was in the audience, people were moaning, and I had to stop and give an altar call to give them relief from the conviction they were under to be saved. That's why right under our nose, folks, God is already building a miracle in California. Amen. And, and we're one church, Bethel, and I'm one evangelist, but there are thousands of people in leadership and in ministry in California that are feeling the same exciting electric expectation of a sweet and simple outpouring of God. And here a state would turn from blue to red from the most unusual and unexpected reason, 
because they fell in love with Christ and they had to follow him and serve him. That makes them love the unborn. That makes them value the male and the female. That builds all of the agendas that we so yearn for is a true conversion to Christ. Amen. And, and the greatest evangelistic tool in the world is the presence of God. I, 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 I can't tell you how much, and I'll just take a second, give it right back to you, Gene. I can't tell you how much of my time is spent asking God to be in that tent, just like they described at Bethel. People walk in, they can't explain it. Why do I believe I no longer am going to use heroin? Why do I believe I'm going to be delivered of sexual sin, suicidal thoughts, cutting myself, worshiping the devil? And instead of harsh, long, elongated sermons, that presence softens them. And suddenly you can almost go directly to an altar call. And you can see in the video and is the depth of how people are being converted. It's not just mass. It's not just quantity, it's quality. Something big is about to break on our shores, folks. And we yeah. really need to be ready. Amen. You know, those of you watching, you know, the, we, we don't really have a plan for this program. <laughs> the producers, we have, we have a format and we have a list. But when the Holy Spirit takes over a program, we, we're going to let him have his way. And, and Pastor Bill, I, as you were talking, I just really believe, you know, I, there are pastors in California that are need, needing to see and wanting to see, but not just California, all across uh, all across this country and the 40 nations that are probably watching tonight, would you just pray for those pastors for strength and the Holy Spirit to help them? Yeah. Father, we turn our heart to you completely, absolutely, completely. And we invite you to come. Come the power of your presence, the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for every single pastor watching this, every church represented, on this program, that there would be such a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit that no individual and no stream could take credit for it, that you would do something above and beyond all of our expectations, all of our prayers, all of our cries, our intercessions, go abundantly above and beyond all we could ask or think of. We pray for this. I pray for great courage that you would teach us as leaders how to make room for you to come and do as you please, and then how to follow you once you show up in an extraordinary way. Teach us how to recognize your presence. Teach us how to recognize when you come into the room in a unique way that we know that the power of the Lord is present to heal or the power of the Lord is present to deliver. Let us have that kind of a discernment where we recognize your heartbeat in the room. I pray this as a gift over this state, over this nation, over the nations of the world, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, I, I want to, we're going to put the phone number up um, for the prayer line. Um, I just really feel like there's, there's so many, if you need a, a licensed prayer minister to pray with you, and if you're a pastor, look, this is, you need somebody to be your two your second person to agree with you over what you're dealing with, give them a call, 877-281-6297. Uh, they're there to pray with you, to agree with you, and there's power. You know, we don't buy into the lie that I don't want to show weakness by asking for prayer. Uh, that's just mm -hmm. a, that's a lie of the enemy, and you need prayer. We're, gonna, we're agreeing with you, and we agree with you. It's just as Pastor Bill prayed that this is exactly what you need. But now it's time for you to pick up the phone. Give him a call and uh, at that phone number. We're going to leave it up for a few minutes. I can't leave it up long because the number always gets just slammed. But we're going to leave it up uh, until we just have to take it down for a few minutes. Then we'll put it up again. So call the number. All right, John, I, I need to go back to you. And, and as we're That's talking right. about <clears throat> what God's doing in this time, there's just a, um, a sweet spirit in the room. Yeah. I know it's there where you're yeah. at. Yeah, it is. I, 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 what I, I go back to what Benny said, where what the enemy's trying to disrupt here is prayer. It's distractions from this. And then Bill said, it's always the base of hope. And if you don't have hope, it's kind of hard to go on. People are very disoriented with this. And what I love about everything that Mario and the two of them and you just said 
is 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says the purpose of prophecy. When you do this, it's to edify, to encourage, and to comfort. It's not just to foretell or to foretell. It's to build people up. That's what edify means. It's to encourage them. Yeah, challenge them. Put courage inside of them. We talked about that in Acts 4 when the enemy says, shut up. No, don't shut up. Like John and Peter. But it's also to comfort them. And what is over everything that's being said tonight is to comfort people. Doesn't matter what's happening in the world. God directs the course of world events, Daniel says, as it pleases him. But God is doing something. And we need in difficult times and in great times to look for where God is. It may be in a big thunder, but it may be in a gentle whisper. But I promise you, you'll know his voice if he's encouraging you. And you'll know someone speaking his voice if they're edifying, encouraging, and comforting. And so as they all talked, I literally just kept thinking of that scripture over and over and over. So I would encourage people, go there and look at it. Meditate on that. 1 Corinthians 14, 3, and just look at it and say, God, this is what I want to look for. And this is when I hear you and I speak to somebody else, I want to build them up. I want to encourage them. And I want to comfort them when they're hurting, when they're confused, when they're disoriented. That's what I want to be found doing. And so I just see that happening. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, amen. I agree with that. Um, uh, Pastor Bill, how do you, uh, how do you encourage people uh, someone right now that they're they're stuck in between. We talked about the two, two different uh, thoughts or uh, about this election, and um, you know we've talked about on this program about legislation and uh, proposed legislation that that is in the face of Christianity, and it's it's very tempting to uh, not throw in the towel, but to be overwhelmed with, oh my, what do it's like you wake up and you have to take a big breath every time you hear a news story because it's just overwhelming uh, the the uh, the outright attack on Judeo-Christian values. I, please, would you minister to the people about what to do in this time in this season? The devil wants us to be impressed with what he's doing. He's just trying to capture attention. I remember Mario saying a bunch of years ago, "He'll enter a bar of soap if you'll worship it." The whole point is, is that he wants us to live in a reaction to what he's doing. Jesus lived in response to the Father. We've got to return to our place of strength. Our strength, we have a gift to discern the heart of the Father. But when we start accusing the prophets, we move in a spirit of accusation. When we uh, put all our hope in one individual, uh, we put hope in man instead of in God. Um, when we make those errors, we, we really... Um, we really put ourselves in a very vulnerable place where we're finding hope in things outside of what the Father is saying and what the Father is doing. And so I, I just always encourage people, listen, get back to what he's saying. Get back to what he's doing. If you don't know what he's doing, then find out what he's done. Just feed your soul on what he's done. Look at the testimonies. I just heard of two resurrections today, two of the most extraordinary stories I've heard in a long, long time with a dear friend of mine, an evangelist friend. Uh, hours, dead for hours, and they were they were uh, raised uh, in a in a hospital after the death certificate was signed, and uh, these these are things that God is doing all over the world, and if you see what He's doing or you see what He has done, you can't help but be encouraged, and uh, that's how you strengthen yourself. And there there are just seasons in our life where there's nobody around us to strengthen us. And sometimes the Lord will actually prevent them from strengthening us so that we learn how to strengthen ourselves. It's one of the keys to breakthrough. It's one of the keys to promotion is we actually learn how to, how to steward our own soul. We know how to steward our own thoughts, our words, our ambitions. All those things are stewarded for the Lord God. And, uh, and that puts us in a position where we have to do that. So I just tell our folks, listen, strengthen yourself. Find out what God has said. Find out what he's doing. And, uh, and it's not hard to be encouraged. We have great, great reasons to be encouraged. Jesus is on the throne, and that's a pretty good reason. <laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. Benny, did you have something to say there? Um, I disagree with what Bill's saying. And, you know, I was reading um, the Lord's Prayer today, and I wanted just to read maybe just the first part. And it's in the Passion Translation. It says, Our beloved Father, dwelling in the heavenly realms, May the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. Right there. 
May the glory of your name yes. be the center on which our lives turn, manifest your kingdom realm, and cause your every purpose to be filled on earth, just as it is in heaven. Wow. And that's what Bill said. We need to fill our lives with what God is doing. And for me personally, I love the news, but I hardly watch the news anymore. Just a little bit to get information. And then I'm like, God, what are you doing? How do you want me to pray today? Where do I stand in all of this? Yeah. And I'm glad you bring that up. By the way, earlier when you told everybody we needed to stop it, I felt like I, the, the mother anointing came out there <laughs> and uh, well, I was, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, we, we, have to, we have to listen to that. And I, I love what you said. You know, you can't keep importing the news, uh, the mainstream media, uh, especially. That's, it's designed, the very uh, design of the news is to get your attention so they can get more viewers to sell more ad space. So, so uh, l Mario, I want you to to speak to that about what you do, because we talked a just a very little bit about what you do uh, preparing for a meeting and why that's important. Before you ever walk into that tent, what you do? What do you do? I believe that uh, Sun Tzu said it, the, said the warriors of old first placed themselves beyond the possibility of defeat and then waited for an opportunity to attack. Before I walk into that tent, I see those people already healed. I see the drug addicts already delivered. I've already won the war alone with God. That's why everyone that knows me knows that they have to jealously guard my afternoon because I cannot be with anyone but Christ. And Christ has to defeat me. And if he defeats me and my flesh, then he'll defeat the powers of darkness. So I wanna make a comment about fire because I also believe besides hope, we need fire. And fire will burn out indecision. It'll burn out confusion. It'll allow you to put the question of this prophecies and who failed and who did what on the shelf and then resume the urgent act of, Lord, the nation is in serious trouble. You called me, you trained me, you raised me up for a specific purpose and I cannot be deluded by that. So one of the things that's important that everyone can take away from what I do to get ready for a tent crusade is I don't let the outward vision. Can you imagine standing in front of a tent full of wheelchairs and people on crutches and some of the most absolutely suffering humanity you've ever seen? I don't see them that way. I cannot walk in there with my own eyes. And likewise, you, you can't go to your job. You can't turn on your TV. You can't do anything. And that's why I have a little phrase that I live by. The end times are not happening to me. I am happening to the end times. Mm. And suddenly you become a catalyst. A catalyst is an element that changes everything around it without itself undergoing a change. And, you know, hopefully I'll get to say something about the gospel because it is the message that God is most interested in is for us to say, here is what God told me to tell America. Because once you know that what you're saying is what God told you to tell America, you have the right to believe that the dead will be raised, the addict will be delivered, the churches will be unified, and there you become unstoppable. That's the pulpit I yearn for every one of my brothers and sisters in ministry right now, is that fire and that belief. I have the message that God gave me for America and nothing will be able to stop you. Well, Mario, I don't want to stop anything right there, what you're going. I mean, feel, please continue. Just two minutes is all I need, just two minutes. <laughs> Today I was, and, and it's so good to be with Bill because I, he is the living embodiment of this. Bill and Benny both love the glory of God with all their heart. I've seen Bill, he's helpless before the presence of God like nobody I've ever seen. He's literally helpless. When God begins to move, Bill is, is helpless. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I might add one comment is you hear all the time that, you know, these young women say, I want to marry a man of God. Well, you, true, you do. But they have emotional issues. We do. We have emotional issues. And when you see a woman like Benny or my wife, Michelle, 
they have ridden through some storms that are absolutely indescribable because God could tell a man of God, hey, we're moving over here. Hey, we're going to sell everything we've got. Hey, we're going to stop preaching this and start preaching this other that God just said. And, and if you want to live with that, you, you know, the Lord bless you. But here's the point I want to make. Dorcas was dead. That's right. And sometimes we need faith to come at us from a completely new direction. Brother Copeland, I, I just wish he was hearing this because it's such a, a, a point that I believe he can run with. Dorcas was dead. And the people around this dead body said, this is not right. This is not right. And they found out that Peter was in Joppa, the great apostle. They didn't bring him there for a wake. They didn't invite him over there <laughs> to reminisce about Dorcas's life. They literally said, bring him here to raise her from the dead. That's a level of submission to the spirit and power in the book of Acts that we can hardly relate to. But it's about right and wrong. Lincoln said, right makes fight. Here's what God is telling us. We're not supposed to let Biden teach our children. We're not supposed to let Kamala Harris dominate our lives. This isn't America. I can no more imagine an atheist America than I can imagine an atheist Israel. This is a land with covenants, wells, deep spiritual history. And folks, God's rolling up his sleeves. He is fiercely in love with what America was, a group of people that crossed an ocean on pieces of wood that you and I wouldn't dare imagine stepping on in order to have freedom to worship Christ. And they carved a nation out of a wilderness that spirit's got to get back in us. God is with us. God is on us. I don't know how we're going to do it. God's going to give us a plan. God's going to give us the money. God's going to give us the gifts and the power and the influence and the open door. And no atheist spirit, no perverted spirit can stand before the body of Christ when she shakes herself from her division and her confusion and her lack of memory. And I'm going to say one more thing. I promise I'm done, Gene. The second weapon David used on the giant was the sling. The first one was his memory of what God had done in the past. He looked at Saul. And he said, you want to know why that nine and a half foot man's going to die? It's because your servant killed a lion and a bear. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Church, we've been here before. We're going to win again the power of God. And God just needs to turn on the fire and stir that fire again in our souls. I'm so sorry I took so long. It's your no, fault. No, that's a good word. Good word, Mario. Don't ever apologize <laughs> yeah. for that. It was good. Gene, All right. can I add something I to saw that? you bouncing over there, John. Go I, ahead. I, I, it's inside of me. It's just <laughs> bullying up inside of me. Uh, Bill talked about if you don't know what God's doing, look at what God's done. That's right. And then what did he just say? He didn't kill Goliath with with a slingshot. He killed him with the memory of what God's done. Where does that show up in the scripture? If you will go look at the New King James Version of Psalm 37, verse 3, we trust in God. It's what, how we believe, just like David did. We do good. But then it says this, and feed on his faithfulness. Go back and look in the scriptures. Go back and look in your own life. Where has it been faithful before when I was confused? Where has it been faithful before when I didn't understand? Where, when I thought it was going to go left and he did right, but it turned out to be the will of God. It was better than what we thought it was, even though it looked like a death before a resurrection. It looked like uh, David was running from Saul before he was anointed king. Outwardly, he already had that anointing. It's Psalm 37, 3. And what the body of Christ needs to do is go back and feed on what God has done to, in order to go forward. I love what God does. Lance has called uh, Trump the chaos candidate, the chaos president. What does God do with chaos? He brings order into chaos. And there's so much, even in the body of Christ, we can't control what sinners do, but we can absolutely control. Well, your very first question in this show, how are we going to handle this this uh, debate or this division. My scripture, my verse that I believe the Holy Spirit put on me is Romans 14. Accept those people 
even if you have disagreements with them. Powerful, powerful chapter. Please go back and look at Romans 14 because it literally says you don't have to agree on everything, even about how this is going to unfold. When is it going to happen? Who got it exactly right and who got it partially right? That's not the issue. The issue is what is God doing and how do I get aligned with it? And in Romans 14, he's like, accept these people. You don't have to agree with them and accept them. Even if they're weaker in some area of faith, they don't have as much faith. Maybe they haven't fed on God's faithfulness as much as you have. Don't judge them just because they're not there where you are yet. Accept them into the body, even if there's some type of disagreement. And I believe if we show up that way as the church, it's going to make all the difference in the world. Because you're right. You said this earlier. God's not done yet. It just doesn't look like a lot of people thought it was going to look. I am like a little kid on a treasure hunt. God, where are you working? What are you doing? What are you up to? I'm, I'm a limited man. You're an omniscient God. I just want to find you and find out what you're doing and be a part of it. And if we can all approach it like that, we'll stay full of hope and our prayers won't be hindered because we'll believe anything is possible with God. So I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. Sorry, Amen. I just had to share that. No, good. Thank you. And, and you know, as you're talking, I was thinking about all the people that... Uh, have come our way on Flashpoint. I mean, we've been blessed. Um, you know, I've spoken with everything from, uh, of course, ministers, but uh, also uh, Sidney Powell and General Flynn and, and these people who are in the thick of it and Mike mm -hmm. Lindell. And uh, they have a hope and a future and they really love God. And yeah. that's, that is, uh, if you want an encouragement, take encouragement that God's got people at the right place at the right time. And we're going to stand back and see what God has. He just hasn't filled us in on it yet. And I really don't like that, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> All right, Mario, I see you over there. Go ahead. Mike Lindell be the first man in history that ever defeated the devil with a pillow fight. And it's going to be amazing. <laughs> All of this, uh, this uh, distraction, I just had to say it, Gene. Yep. It was in there and it came out and I'm sorry. I know, it's And the okay. feathers are going to fly and that's okay with me. But let me tell you something. There is something in us all that just wants to be in a good fight. We want to be in the front lines. Remember in football, you look down the bench and the guys with the muddy uniforms, you knew those were the starters because they'd been in on every play. Yeah. And, and everybody that wants a clean uniform and wants to be examined and kept out of the fray, God bless you. You're going to be so bored. But those of you that willingly step in and just say, God, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. You're going to see things that the church has never seen before. He's going to outdo himself. And I'm excited. All right. Well, I can't believe we're already at like a little over 10 minutes left in the program. I want to give this back to Pastor Bill, Pastor Bill, I, I don't know what God's got something for you to share. I, I want you to just share it. Oh, goodness. Um, you, you want to speak first? I, I have something. He'll let me go first. Oh, okay. You know, when I go to God uh, through all of this and say, God, what, what's next? What's going on? What are you doing? That's always my main question. I hear his whisper and he says, just wait. And that phrase, just wait, is it an explosion of excitement and joy. And it propels my day because I'm, I'm like Mario and John. I'm like so excited for what God is doing and what he's about to do. And uh, what he is exposing right now is so necessary for it to be exposed. And I'm just excited. I, I, every day I'm excited. God, what's next? What's next? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, have to, we have to take responsibility for what we feed on. And it's, I guess it's kind of going back to a, a prior subject. But, you know, if I have more input from secular media than I do the Word of God, then my discouragement is self-inflicted. I'm responsible to make to make sure uh, that I guard what I eat, I guard what I meditate on, I guard what I what I think, what I pray. Uh, don't use prayer as an excuse to accuse somebody. It's uh, that's a violation of why we've been given the privilege to come into the courts of God. And uh, so I, I just uh, I just feel so strong on us guarding our hearts. A life verse for me is out of Proverbs 4:23. It says, watch over your heart with all diligence, because from it flow the issues of 
life. And we've got to be really careful in this season because we can end up with a polluted heart and not even know it. We pick up a political spirit of anger and animosity towards uh, somebody and not even know that we're outside uh, of, of the presence of, of the Lord, outside of the anointing of Christ. In some ways, I, I, I think the devil does, doesn't even mind what I think politically as long as I leave the anointing, the presence of God to enforce what I believe. Um, he, he, he wants us separate from our real strength. And our strength is the word of the Lord, the presence of God, and it's the power of the gospel. And that's, uh, I just think we've got to be careful with, the, with what we allow in our heart, in our own mind. And what we're willing to think about. Yeah. Amen. And you know, that's what, you know, that came from Bill Johnson, pastor of the Bethel Word of Faith Church there in Reading, because he is preaching to faith right there to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this word was given to you for a reason. And that's what we have got to stand on. And that's this word of faith that we preach and we stand up because, you know, the comfort uh, tonight has been uh, say this, lady and gentlemen, that, that we, it's been a night of comfort. I, I don't, this has blessed me tonight. Thank you for blessing me and all that you've said and done. It's just been a, it's been like a salve to the wound. Uh, can of, I, of, can of, I add yes, something, John, Gene? Go ahead. I, I really feel like there's just a couple of themes going on here. When, when Benny talked about prayer earlier and she talked about the fake news, I don't even want to watch it. And then Bill just tied together, if we do have to watch it, because we have to live in this world but not be of it, the way we do it is we guard our heart and watch what that we're watching the news in faith. So let me give you a, a biblical example. If David showed up and saw Goliath, a lot of people watch the news like this. Oh, well, I can't do this. Why? Because he's nine foot tall, because he's been fighting since he was a youth, because I'm a little boy, because he's covered in armor. He's got an armor bearer. He's got a, a weaver's beam. He's got his spear weighs this much. His sword weighs it. It's like all the facts. The whole point of fake news and evil news is to discourage the body of Christ so that you will lose faith. But David didn't look at the fake news and all this stuff that scared everybody else and kept them trembling in their tents. What did he do? He said, wow, that's a whole lot of facts to sort through. I better put this stone right there because it's the only opening left. And so the person of faith is literally doing it. And then Benny said this. She said, when I pray, I wait and it's the same scripture we gave, for, uh, Psalms 37. It starts in the context when you feed on his faithfulness in verse 3, it starts, don't fret with evildoers. And by verse 7, he's saying, don't fret, feed on his faithfulness, trust in God, do what is right. The things we're supposed to do in the midst of evil people prospering, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him in verse 7. Psalm 37, verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. In a position of faith, when it's your moment to strike, you have faith that you can land that stone because of what God's already done in the past. And so for me, what everyone is saying here is this theme of there's a mess out here. God's going to bring order to it. We don't live in this kingdom anyway. We influence this kingdom, but we live in the kingdom of heaven. And mm -hmm. our job is to bring that authority down here on the earth and do it in a spirit of faith and optimism. Yes. Amen. Good word, John. Yeah, that was good. All right, Mario, I, I want to give you a couple minutes here. I think you need to, uh, uh, we, we're going to put the prayer line back up there and I need you to cast the net for souls. This program is going to be shared all over social media and everywhere else. Uh, you're in every 50 states and about 40 countries. So go ahead, brother, cast you know, the net. <laughs> yeah, no challenge there, brother. That's good. Everyone that I look at right now, wherever you are and whatever condition you are in and believe you're in, there's one thing that's true. You find it in Acts chapter 14. It says, and God proved that his message, their message was from him by giving them power to work great miracles. God never wanted your soul's destiny to rest in a dry, dusty message that isn't provable. It said very clearly that the message from God is provable. Jesus said in John 7, verse 17, he said, if you do what I am teaching, you will know that it came from God. It's as simple as that. Humanity is a history of war, violence, racism, evil, and wickedness because of one thing, 
The human race said, I'm going to try to find happiness without God. And that's the history of our world. That's the history of the human race. And right now, you can turn your story into a new ending by saying, I will defeat evil by returning to Christ or surrendering for the first time in my life. In this moment, I guarantee you, I have witnessed thousands and tens of thousands born again by a sincere prayer from the heart that goes like this. Jesus, right now, right here, I see you on the cross dying for me. And you proved that you loved me by dying for me. I see you rising from the dead on the third day. That proves you have the power to transform me. No matter what I think of myself, you can cleanse me. You can transform me right now. And I say it with my mouth, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10, that I confess you are the Lord and you've risen from the dead. Now, why should you call that number? Why should you keep trying even after you didn't get through the first time? Because someone wonderful on the other end of that phone is going to solidify the choice you just made. It's going to make it real like few things are in your whole life. You will never regret this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, amen. Mario. Uh, okay, call that number. Uh, coming up next week, next week, uh, back on Flashpoint, Hank Kuhneman. Uh, special guests include Tony Suarez, Mario Marilla is going to be back, Robbie Dawkins back from a trip to Afghanistan. He's got some interesting insight from his trip that he just got back uh, from, I think, tonight he was getting back. You don't want to miss a minute of it. And, of course, next week, starting next week, we start with the news every day at, at uh, uh, 12 Eastern, 5 p.m. Eastern with the news. I had to think about it. <laughs> Victory News right here on the Victory Channel. If you need to know more information, uh, go victory.com. Listen, we're, share this video. Such a wonderful, thank you, gentlemen. And, and Benny, thank you so much for being on tonight. Pastor Bill, uh, I'll give you the last 30 seconds. Go for it. Parting words. <laughs> well, Mario already said it. Jesus conquered death. He raised from the death. He's our absolute complete hope. He has an answer for every problem that exists on the planet. It's in his mind right now. He doesn't have to make one up. It's there. We just need to turn to him and ask. And I believe that the Lord is going to bring wisdom and power to the gift in this season. Amen. Yes. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much. Thanks for joining us tonight. Remember, you don't want to go anywhere except right here on Victory for your news and for Flashpoint. We'll be back next week, Tuesday and Thursday. You don't want to miss anything. Join us church Sunday morning. If you're in California, go to Bethel. It's a good church. You need to be there. Don't forget, God loves you. We love you. All of us. Jesus is Lord.